Welcome back. Our next speaker uh, is Ms. Sonia Kinra, Additional District and Sessions Judge, Kam Faculty Member, Chandigarh Judicial Academy. After completing her Master's in Law from Punjab University, Chandigarh, in the year 2000, Ms. Sonia Kinra practiced as an advocate for seven years in the Punjab and Haryana High Court. In the year 2004, she joined Punjab Judicial Services and she was promoted to Superior Judicial Services in the year 2016. Apart from her judicial services, she is also working for rights of the children who are victims and who are in conflict with the law and has also presented a paper at national level. She has also completed courses from various universities and other corporates. She joined the assignment of faculty member at Chandigarh Judicial Academy in the year 2021. May I now request Ms. Sonia Kinra, learned additional district and sessions judge, come faculty member Chandigarh Judicial Academy, to apprise us on the topic, guidelines on deposition of vulnerable witnesses, and Witness Protection Scheme 2018. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your words of wisdom. Good morning, everybody. Today, apart from this online session, everybody knows that we are having here 113 trainee judicial officers from the state of Haryana. And this session is about the Witness Protection Scheme no doubt I took the online session prior to it also that was on witness protection scheme as well as guidelines for recording of evidence. But now the guidelines have been issued by the Honorable High Court on the directions of the Committee of Justice Gita Mattal, which have been issued recently and there is little bit change and therefore we need to have another session on this. Both the things are intermingled, the witness protection scheme as well as the guidelines on the recording of the deposition of the vulnerable witnesses. So I will want you to have a little look back that how it came, how the law has evolved on both these things. Earlier before the year 1983, section 327, it was only section 327 without any subsection which you which stated that it is the open court. The criminal court is open court wherever it is being held. And thereafter, in the year 1983, that was after the Mathura rape case, very famous case, the subsections were state, which were introduced. The original section 327 was read as subsection 1 with proviso and thereafter subsection 2 was added notwithstanding anything that the inquiry into and trial of rape or an offence under section 376 A, B, C shall be conducted in camera. And provided that the presiding judge may, if he thinks fit, or on an application made by either of the parties, allow any particular person to have access. And thereafter, after the introduction of addition of these subsections 1 and 2, there the case came the state of Punjab versus Gurmeet Singh. It was laid stress upon in that case that the subsections which have been introduced, they should be followed in letter and spirit. And thereafter, and thereafter even it was advised that they should be tried by the lady judges as far as possible. After the case of state of Punjab versus Gurmeet Singh, the case came of Sakshi. Sakshi versus Union of India. In this case, apart from the other guidelines, many guidelines were issued to all the stakeholders. These stakeholders were Sakshi versus Union of India. 
Sorry, there is some problem in the PPT. PPT on Karuna. PPT share for it. Consider PPT. The other guidelines which were issued that a screen or the mirror must be used for recording the statement of the victim or the witness and the questions which were to be put in cross examination. In that judgment, it was only with regard to cross examination. They will be put to the presiding officer and presiding officer will put to the witness. And next was that there will be sufficient breaks allowed during the examination of the witness that could be a child or the victim of the sexual abuse. Thereafter, in the year 2009, second proviso to subsection 2 was added. That is the provided further that in camera trial shall be conducted as far as practicable by a woman judge or magistrate. That was the direction in the state versus Gurmeet Singh. And second was that there was ban on printing or publication of trial proceedings in relation to an offense of rape may be lifted. Subject to maintaining confidentiality of the name and address of the parties. So the names and address of the victims at that part, juncture were stated not to be mentioned in the publication. Then came the case of state of Maharashtra versus Bandhu. In this case, the stress was laid upon the establishment of special centers for examination of vulnerable witness in criminal cases. And it was dwelt on the guidelines which were issued by the High Court of Delhi for recording of the evidence of the vulnerable witness in criminal matters and noted that special centers have been set up for Delhi for that purpose. This was with regard to the vulnerable witness deposition. Now came the case of Mahendra Chavla versus Union of India. This is the famous case of Bapu Asara where many witnesses were having threat to their lives even one witness was killed. The brother of the victim was having threat to life. And in this case, the witness protection scheme of 2018 was adopted in its entirety. Then this is the witness protection scheme. We need to have a glance over what witness protection scheme states. Many a times the applications are moved before the court for witness protection under this scheme. So what you have to do because you are not the competent authority under the witness protection scheme. Here the competent authority is the standing committee that is of the district and session judge of that district, the head of the police and the head of the prosecution. Head of the police may be the CP or the SSP in the district and the head of the prosecution is the DA. District attorney is the member secretary. Every application has to be moved through the member secretary. Now there are some important definitions. Live link we all know as we are continuing today in the on the live link. Then which offenses are covered under this scheme? The offenses which are punishable with death or life imprisonment or an imprisonment up to seven years and above. Even the offenses under all the clauses of section 354 and 509 IPC. Only these offenses are covered. Then threat analysis report. Very important term under this scheme. It states that whenever any application is received by the competent authority, that application requires to have the report. Report from the ACP or DSP of the area where which is the concern that the witness might be living there if he is having threat to life or the property is there if he is having threat to the property. 
so the report has to be called and this report is very extensive it will mention about the threat to what extent the threat and what nature of the threat is and whether the threat is actually there or not what is the intention of the persons who are threatening even and this report has to be submitted before the competent authority within 5 days of the order after receipt of the report or before the receipt of the report even the competent authority can interview the person who is having threat that again could be in person or through the live link but all the proceedings will remain confidential because itself it is the to protect the wit witness everything will be confidential and after receiving the report there will be the 5 days within 5 days of the receipt of the report the matter has to be decided by the competent authority here is the flow chart now what sort of protections can be given there are three types of protection which are defined that is the normal protection to the witness second is the relocation of the witness the witness can be relocated to some other safe place third is the change in the identity of the witness it states even to the effect that the witness can be given some other name maybe the alphabet or some other name and with the change of the entire identity his papers will be prepared according to the identity existing identity which has been allotted to him and thereafter the witness between the witness who has been relocated or whose identity has been changed you need some person who is via media so that whenever the court requires that person or whenever the witness is required for any other purpose he can be contacted with and that person is required now who has to get it implemented it is the head of the police in the state for the protection for the relocation and change in identity it is the home department of the state or the ut even the it can be revised the order which has been there it can be revised but again the threat analysis report has to be called and the it can be reviewed quarterly on the basis of the monthly report monthly follow up report has to be filed before the competent authority and these are the types of protection measures which have been provided under the scheme that the to ensure that accused does not come face to face with the victim monitoring the mail and telephone calls even to provide the number which is unlisted telephone number to the witness installation of the devices which could be the security doors cctv alarms fencing then again concealment emergency contact person for the witness close protection maybe the patrolling near the house and then ensuring expeditious recording of the statement of the witness during the trial and apart from all these any other protection which the competent authority feels that it can provide to and it should provide to that can be ordered so this is about the witness protection now even the performer has been given at the end of the scheme that how it has to be applied that performer has to be filled there has to be undertaking of the witness who is coming under this scheme that the all information provided by him is true and correct and whenever the witness comes suppose immediately he requires some interim protection that can be provided even after interim protection has been provided tomorrow it is found that the information given by the witness was wrong and some money has been expended upon him that money can be recovered from the witness under this scheme so this is all about the witness protection scheme this is the form which is at the end of the protection scheme and the undertaking 
Thereafter came very famous case, Samriti Badade versus State of Maharashtra. In this, the definition of vulnerable witness has been widened up now. Earlier, we used to think it is only the child or the lady who woman victim who is the victim of the sexual abuse, but it has been widened up to large extent. According to this judgment, age neutral witness age neutral means witness of any age of sexual assault. Second is gender neutral victim. Gender neutral, maybe the male, maybe the female, and third one is the transgender. We should not forget this third term now. Who are under the POXO Act? Then age and gender neutral victims, victim of any age or of any gender under Section 377 IPC. Then witness suffering from mental illness as defined under Section 2S of the Mental Health Care Act of 2017. But it is subject to the competency of the witness under Section 118 of the Evidence Act. Then any witness deemed to have threat perception under the Witness Protection Scheme, which we have just undergone. Any speech or hearing impaired individual or a person suffering from any other disability who is considered to be a vulnerable witness by the competent authority. And any other witness which is deemed to be vulnerable by the court concern. This is the definition provided under this judgment. Now, in this judgment only, the committee was formed all over India of headed by the Honorable Justice Gita Mittal and earlier we have also the perception that it is only under the criminal law. But now after that, thereafter again one order was passed and it was stated that it will work on all civil matters, on JJ boards, criminal courts and family courts even. But the guidelines now have included even the terms tribunal and forums. So it is workable on all matters which are pending either before the tribunal, forum, courts, maybe civil or criminal or the family courts or the board, JJ board. Irrespective whether it is a civil matter or a criminal matter, but what you have to see is whether the witness comes under the term vulnerable. That witness of any age can be termed as vulnerable witness. And thereafter, we have to follow the guidelines how the deposition of such vulnerable witness will be recorded. So these guidelines, they have been earlier, the guidelines were floated, but they were based on the guidelines which were floated by the Delhi High Court as we have studied. Now, Justice Committee of Justice Gita Mittal has uh, issued the guidelines all over India and these guidelines are based upon the same one with the minor changes with regard to our High Court, the rules which have to be followed. Now, the objective, what is the object to record the evidence? It is only so that the truth can be extracted out. How the truth has to be extracted that we have to look into. Then to minimize harm or secondary victimization of a vulnerable witness. Third, to ensure that the rights of all the parties. Earlier it was only to look into that the fair trial has been there to the accused, but now the term has been added to ensure that the rights of all the parties in the judicial process are effectively implemented. First is the accused right to fair trial then victim to take part effectively, then treat it sensitively and not to be subjected to secondary victimization and the protection of the rights of the vulnerable witnesses. So all these are required to be implemented. Now based on the definition of vulnerable witness, the guidelines have issued that any child victim or witness who has not completed 18 years of age is vulnerable 
witness any victim of an offense under the poxo act any victim of an offense under any of the clauses of 376 and 354 and then 377 ipc third one is any person with disability as defined under rights of persons with disabilities act 2016 then any witness who deemed to have threat perception under the witness protection scheme which has been issued by the union government and approved in the case of mahinder chavla versus union of india then very important any other witness deemed to be vulnerable by the concerned court including family court children court jj board civil and criminal courts or any tribunal or forum now come to some specific terms earlier also the support person was defined differently under the guidelines but now the support person means a person who has been assigned by cwc child welfare committee under the poxo rules then support person or para legal or para legal volunteer provided by the dlsa or slsa under the jj act model rules or any other person who is appointed by the court because under these guidelines the power has been given to the court to appoint a support person and this support person may be including the psychosocial support who will accompany and assist the vulnerable witness who may be minor or major even at the time of testifying the in the court in the proceedings then comes the term development level as it also pertains to the child so we have to look into what is the development level of the child which will be depending upon his socio economic background also then comes the term in camera proceedings in camera proceedings means that only the presiding officer the court personnel which you feel necessary to be present at that there could be a live link the counsels for both the parties they are allowed to present and if it is a child victim then a support person or the person in whom the child has trust or confidence or any interpreter if there is only these persons are allowed no general public is allowed to be present this is the in camera proceedings now comfort item comfort item is again relating to the child we all know that child is comfortable with any of the articles maybe a toy maybe any utensil maybe any blanket so he can be allowed to carry that item at the time of his any statement any statement can be the statement before the investigating officer statement before the magistrate under section 164 and court proceedings in the trial the deposition of the child witness then concealment of identity of witness it means and includes any legislative provision that is under section 228 aipc also it covers and even under the poxo act now concealment of identity of witness is there the term is identity not only name so we have to look into that the entire identity of the witness is concealed now it states that means and includes any legislative provision or judicial ruling prohibiting the disclosure of the name address school family relative neighborhood or any other information which could lead to the identification of the vulnerable witness again it can be in the form of print or electronic or social media or made known to the public at large so that concealment has to be there 
Then very interesting term is their courthouse tour. This is a pre-trial tour of courtroom and court complex. The term which has been added that now it has to be got done by the support person or a paralegal volunteer. The child has to be shown or the vulnerable witness has to be shown that on the day of the deposition where that witness would be standing or sitting. Who is presiding officer? What is the job of the presiding officer? What is the job of the persons who are sitting with the presiding officer? What will be the role of the defense counsel? from which passage he has to go, who will meet him on the way, the entire procedure. So that the witness who is vulnerable, he becomes aware of the things. He is familiar to the thing. The day when he comes for the deposition, it should not be a new environment for it. And it should be a comfortable zone for him to depose in the court. the special measures. <clears throat> it again includes the use of legislative provisions and mode, method and instrument considered necessary for providing assistance in recording deposition of vulnerable witness. Then testimonial aids. It could be the screen, single visibility mirrors so that the victim or the witness could not see the accused. Then live links, image or voice altering devices even. What the witness is stating, his or her voice is altered so that it could not be recognized by the accused. Then or any other technical devices, facilities and equipment. Live link again has the same meaning. Now two terms have been introduced. One is the secondary victimization and Second is the re-victimization. Re-victimization pertains to the repeated offense. It is only at the hands of the perpetrator or the accused. But secondary victimization is at the hands of the system. It could be any stakeholder, any institution that after occurrence of the offense with whom the child comes in contact for reporting to the police, for medical examination to the doctor, then for recording statement under section 164 to the magistrate and then in the court for deposition and prior to it even the prosecutor. So if any harm or victimization is at the hand of any other stakeholder, even the society at large is a stakeholder who ostracize such victims then it is a secondary victimization and then beating room it has been provided that a safe place for vulnerable witnesses should be there where the witness can wait along with the support person or the counsel or the paralegal volunteer and it should be equipped with the toys or for whatever which is comfortable to the witness we have discussed this pre-trial visit of witnesses. Then comes the competency of vulnerable witness. It is same as provided under section 118 of the Evidence Act. Every witness is competent, but we have to look into if the due to tender age, disability, which could be of mind or body or illness, he is able to understand the questions and answer them rationally. Then while conducting this competency examination, the court shall not use general knowledge or current affairs. Questions to adjust the competency. Even the philosophical questions should not be put. I would refer here to a judgment state versus Rahul, criminal LP 250 oblique 2012, decided on April 15, 2013. You all must go through this judgment. You'll, you'll come to know that how the void dial or the competency test has to be conducted. Then <clears throat> even at the time of assessment, assessment of the competency of a witness, 
the presence of the persons have been limited. The accused, if you think that there is no need of the accused to be present at that time, you can ask that he should not be allowed to come. And the term which has been added is the non offending parent. In the POXO Act, we have to allow either the parent or the guardian or the person in whom the child has trust or confidence. He could be any, any neighbor, any family friend, but of major, not minor. And that person has to be allowed at all stages again. At the time when the statement is being recorded by the investigating officer, the statement recorded being recorded by the magistrate under section 164 CRPC. That person has to be allowed to sit there, but that person has not to allow to prompt or survey the child victim. And even at the time of the deposition in the court. So non offending parent has been used. Guardian, friend, relative of a child victim or person in whom the child has trust and confidence. Other persons who can be allowed are the support person, translator, interpreter, person familiar with the manner of communication of a vulnerable witness with who are with intellectual or physical disability. The accused unless the court determines that competence requires to be and can be fully evaluated in their absence. And Again, the discretion is in the hands of the court. Any other person who in the opinion of the court can assist in such competent assessment. Then why conducting this competency test only the presiding officer has to put the questions. And again, as per developmental level. And it has to be taken care that the questions which could lead to the disclosure of the identity of the child victim should not be put in the competency test as if in which school you are going in which area you are residing such questions should also not be put and these questions should not also be related to the trial not to the general knowledge, not to the trial, not to the current affairs, not the philosophical questions and no questions with regard to leading to the disclosure of the identity of the witness. Then before recording the evidence of such vulnerable witness, the presiding officer Suomoto. After recording the reasons or on the application of either party, maybe the prosecution, maybe the plaintiff or the defendant in the civil matters or the accused person may meet a vulnerable witness in the presence of the prosecution and defense lawyer or in their absence for explaining the court process in order to help them understand the procedure and give their testimony free of fear and concerns. Then come the assistance of an interpreter, translator, special educator or expert. So whenever it is felt that the witness is not able to communicate in the language which is vernacular to that area or in the English. So we need a translator or the interpreter where the victim or the witness is not in a condition to speak or hear due to any physical or mental disability, then we need to have special educator or expert. The term expert is has been added now in these guidelines so we can get engaged again at all stages. And what qualifications are required? It is prescribed in rule five of the POXO rules at present, but in other judgments or the rules there are we can peruse that. The court may also take the assistance of a person familiar with the manner of communication of a vulnerable witness if such witness is intellectually or physically disabled. Then according to the age level of maturity or special individual needs of a witness, we have to put the questions. 
and take all other measures. And if the court appoints any such interpreter, translator, special educator or expert, the questions are to be put to him and not directly to the child as he is the person who will communicate to the child, but he has to communicate with the same intent the question with which it has been put. When the court can allow the presence of support person, it can be allowed even at the time of the recording any statement and at the time of recording the testimony of the victim or the witness. And again, it can be a verbal order or a written order, but I would suggest that it should always be a written order. The court may allow the support person to take appropriate steps to provide emotional support to the vulnerable witness in the court of the proceedings and also inform the court if the vulnerable witness needs a break or is feeling stressed or triggered or any other if financial problem is there. But if at the time of the deposition he is standing with the witness, he should not prompt, sway or influence or tutor the vulnerable witness. Where no suitable person is available, then in rare cases, this vulnerable witness has to be otherwise a neutral person. But if no other person is available, then witness, second witness of that case can be appointed. But if it is so appointed, the condition is that his evidence be recorded prior to the evidence of the vulnerable witness. Then the court shall allow support persons to coordinate with other stakeholders. Again, police, SJPU, medical officer, prosecutor or mental health professionals or the CWC JJ board. And as far as possible, the concerned court shall ensure the continuity of the same support person during the deposition. Because it will affect again the relation of the support person and the victim if he is a child. If the support person is also a witness, then his evidence has to be recorded prior to the evidence of vulnerable witness. Now there are some additional guidelines specific to child victims and witnesses. First, as I've stated, the question should be asked according to the mental level, developmental level of the child. No question from the trial. Focus is only on the ability of the child to remember, communicate, distinguish between truth and falsehood and appreciate the duty to testify truthfully. This is the only purpose of the void air. There is another term guardian ad litem. This term guardian ad litem as it itself reflects that the guardian has to be appointed for a victim. And that guardian from B can be from the member of the bar or practicing advocate. But again, it should not be another witness of the same case. And preferably if the parents are legitimate, any of the parent can be appointed as the guardian. What measures have to be taken to protect the privacy and well-being of child victims and witnesses? First is the confidentiality. Judicial transparency, and they are mutually exclusive. So right to information and access to court records in their own case shall not be restricted in the name of protecting their privacy and confidentiality. Now we have to even devise methods that how the name, the identity of the victim or the witness, child victim or the witness can be protected. There are numerous things. When the chalan has to be presented, it should be in a sealed cover. Even at the stage of the investigation, the IO has to keep those documents in a separate sealed cover where 
the name or the identity of the victim is mentioned and the duplicate had to be prepared by cutting in the same or by not disclosing the identity of the victim. Thereafter, the courts had other duties how to not to disclose the identity. When we are recording the evidence, when we are recording the statement under section 164, the victim can be addressed as a victim only or any alphabet can be assigned to it. Then we have also to look into that the victim or the witness do not go under stress. For this, the small breaks can be given. <coughs> the time we have to select at which the deposition has to be recorded. It should not be the time when the it is a time for the rest of the child. The date has to be scheduled accordingly. It should not be date which hamper the studies of the child victim. It should be a holiday for him and the working for the courts. So we have to look into all these aspects. Even the defense lawyers present in the courtroom, they had to be asked that the identity of the child or the proceedings going on are not to be disclosed publicly. Then if the child victim or witness refuses to give testimony in the presence of the accused, then you have to Either it should be a live link or from the one way mirror visibility. After this, I'll play a small video of the VWDC center, which is being run in the Chandigarh courts. And any other measure which the court deems necessary to take at that stage can be taken. Now, some SOP has to be followed during virtual examination of the child witness. What is that? It is based on the re-children in straight situation case. The case name is the re-children in straight situation. And the citation of this case is 2022 SCC online SC 189. It is there that in criminal trials where the child witness does not reside near the area where the trial is taking place. Then the child can give the evidence from the area where he is residing from the court complex or from the DLSA office where he is residing and the secretary of the DLSA becomes the person who will get it conducted. The requisite manpower for smooth and efficient functioning. Suppose 20 courts are being run in one district. Maybe five courts are having the deposition of the vulnerable witness in a day. Now the time slot has to be managed. So learner district and session judge of all the districts, they will look into that manpower is there who will look after the efficient working of the centers. Now application of rules for video conferencing for courts. Wherever applicable or in case of any ambiguity, rules for video conferencing for courts contained in Punjab and Haryana High Court Rules and Orders that is volume 1, 3 and 5 or any other rule as framed by our High Court will apply. This is about the booking of the slot. Then the manpower, one officer in charge shall be appointed by the district and session judge. Then the technical assistant come coordinator will be there who will coordinate according to the rules for video conferencing. Now comes the right to be informed. There are some rights of the vulnerable witness. Or the child witness. Those rights are to be 
disclose to the witness how the witness will come to know that i have such rights i can use that rights it is the duty of all the stakeholders to disclose those rights all stakeholders includes the presiding officers what has to be disclosed that charges brought against the accused or if none the stay of proceedings against the accused that is the state stage of the case then progress of the case procedures of the criminal justice process including the role of vulnerable witnesses the importance timing and manner of testimony then existing support mechanisms what is available what support system is available to such witnesses it has to be disclosed so that if so motto any action is not being taken the application can be moved on behalf of that witness schedule of court proceedings that the vulnerable witness is available on the day when the date is fixed the right of the informant or person authorized by the informant to be present at the time of the bail application whenever the hearing of the bail application is there under any of these sections the complainant or the informant has to be present there so it becomes a duty of the court to inform him or her then right of vulnerable victims and their dependents to reasonable accurate and timely notice of court proceedings and bail proceedings under sc and st act then right of vulnerable victims and their dependents to be heard during proceedings of bail discharge release parole conviction or sentence of an accused or any connected proceedings or arguments or filing of written submission or conviction acquittal or sentencing under the sc st act availability of public and private emergency and crisis services which shall include the shelters the child victims can be a child in need of protection and care so where that child could be placed if he really has to be taken out of the family and put in some play safe place then the he should know availability of protective measures what we have done under the schemes that this is the protective measure it should be informed to the victim or the witness availability of victim compensation benefits availability of legal aid then availability of institutional and non institutional care under the poxo act and the jj rules and jj act relevant rights of child victims and witnesses under the poxo act and the jj rules the progress and disposition of the specific case including a criminal case the apprehension what is the status of the accused even whether he is in custody or on bail all decisions or at least those decisions which are affecting the interest of the victim and vulnerable witness even the latest judgment has come in the year 2023 that whenever any adverse order is passed or any order which is affecting the rights of the child is being passed he has to be intimated supplied copy of that order and has to be intimated what remedy he has against that order and where the remedy lies and what is the time span for availing that remedy then waiting area for vulnerable witness it should be apart from the area which is already slotted for the other persons in other trials it is providing that separate area should be provided even if the child is too young the there should be a proper arrangement for sleep of that child it should not be accessible without it should be accessible rather without confronting with other litigants meaning thereby everything separate and from that area the 
deposition center should have again a separate passage. Then it should have the facilities of the toilets, the drinking water, and even the case number display monitor. Arrangements for deposition of such witness from the waiting area may include monitor and screens. Now, what are the duties to provide comfortable environment? As we have discussed, the waiting areas, how it should be furnished. <clears throat> when the child is being examined and he is on the witness chair, the face of the witness chair should be such arranged that if the accused on the live link, the profile, the entire face of the witness should not be hurdled in any manner. The accused should be able to look at his face, but the witness should not be able to look at the accused unless and until such witness chooses to. So this is the other way around now. From the deviation from the adversarial criminal justice system. Then <clears throat> access to crash facilities within court premises should be available and even the judges have been dispensed with the judicial robes during such testimony of the witness. There are some directions for judges of criminal courts, children's court and JJ boards that vulnerable witness should be given higher priority. Whenever such cases are there, you have to prioritize them and schedule the cases accordingly, not only of the day, but even when you are fixing the day, posting the case for other day. To identify the developmental needs of vulnerable witnesses and accommodate them accordingly in the arrangement of the courtroom and recording of the testimony. Then to treat the statement of such witness with disability. There is a provision 1645A of the CRPC when the statement of vulnerable witness with word is not vulnerable there, witness with disability, which may be temporary or permanently, can be mentally or physically being victim under section any clauses of 354 or 376 or 509, then that statement under section 164 has to be treated as examination in chief. So the statement of the vulnerable witness falling under that category can be treated as examination in chief. Additional measures, for example, <clears throat> the person who is coming, the witness who is coming, he is a blind. So the braille language can be used. Even it has been guided that the summons for to such witnesses should be on the paper, which is the braille one so that it can be perused by the persons with such disability. It has it is our duty to ensure that the witness is not scared and he is able to reveal everything. Adequate time and opportunity should be given to refresh the memory of such witness. To avoid asking the witness in the sexual abuse cases that they should demonstrate it on their body part. Rather, some diagram can should be there so that the child can point out to that part. <clears throat> Unnecessary sequestration should not be there. Witness should not be made embarrassed. And to encourage such witness, the court should say that he or she should let know the court the problem what he or she is facing. If he or she is not understanding the question or need a break, then to ensure that the atmosphere is comfortable and not intimidating by allowing limited number of defense lawyers. Sometimes there is a battery of lawyers with one accused only. So you have to curtail that number also. And the court will ensure before time that equipment of live link is working. It is not at that time we have to ensure and it will delay the matter. This 
insurance is before the before in hand to carefully monitor the examination and cross examination to care allow to carry a comfort item or to provide transport or transport cost in delhi courts for the child witness the transport is provided by the court it takes and drops the child in the court then to ensure that the sop affirmed by honorable supreme court is followed testimony of the vulnerable witness should be recorded when he is well rested he may be allowed reasonable periods of relief during the period of deposition and the proceedings should be conducted in camera most important now whenever there is a live link whether it has to be there or not the court can decide it on its own suo moto or on an application but when application is there then the court has to consider some factors these are 13 factors which are to be considered we should not forget that this is not only about the child witness but the vulnerable witness so that is the age and level development of vulnerable witness his physical and mental health any physical emotional or psychological harm nature of the alleged offense and circumstances of its commission any threat against the vulnerable witness relationship with the accused whether the perpetrator was having any relationship the accused was having any relationship or the stranger his reaction to any prior encounter with the accused in court or elsewhere his reaction prior to trial when the topic of testifying was discussed with him by parents or professionals specific symptoms of stress testimony of expert or lay witnesses the custodial situation of the child and the attitude of the members of the family the wishes of the vulnerable witnesses on the manner they would like to testify other relevant factors such as atmosphere and formalities of court procedure these factors are to be considered with regard to decision that how the testimony has to be recorded now what are the rules before starting with the evidence you must tell that you don't have to nod you have to reply specifically if you are not able to understand the question you should ask it properly you should not say hm even i would uh, like to advise you that in all cases before recording evidence we should make clear these points to the witness it would curtail the ambiguities which comes in the recording of the evidence and if he doesn't understand he should ask please repeat the question and you should not allow the questions which are having proverbial meaning or complex sentences they should be in simple language simple sentences one question at a time not a complex question and witness can be allowed to testify in narrative form if he wants to link the evidence he wants to answer the question with some background he can be allowed to be in the narrative forms and minimize the repetition of questions suppose there are two three defendants so every set of defendant will be having the opportunity to cross examine and repetition of questions should be avoided and the questions which are put in the sexual abuse cases it should be through the court not directly to the witness then the court shall not allow the questions i have stated you having two or three meanings past and present in one sentence or multiple questions in the same sentence to ascertain the truth ensure that questions are stated in a form appropriate to the developmental level now the case i have referred it was that the child was from very backward class but he was asked do you know who is the prime minister of the india so it was rebuked that such questions of which we know that the child cannot answer should not be asked 
the witness should be protected from harassment or the embarrassment and the question shall be put witness only through the court we should not forget about the compensation now as the victimology has grown now so the compensation should be there then protection and privacy and safety the record is confidential and is provided only to these persons members of the court staff for administrative use public prosecutor for inspection defense counsel for inspection guardian ad litem for inspection and other persons as determined by the court whenever there is a video leak earlier it was that it should be video taped but now if the court feels it should be video tape and there should be a transcript has to be there but when video tape is there there should be a protective order that such tape will not be shown to anybody else it should not be sold it should not be viewed by anybody else except with the by the person with the order of the court and there are some protective measures which now you can grant as a court when you declare the witness as a vulnerable witness apart from the protection scheme we have done those are you can even prohibit direct or indirect contact between a child victim or witness any restraint order direct continuation of bail conditions during trial protection for a vulnerable victim or witness by the police or any other protective measures that may be deemed appropriate including stipulated under the witness protection scheme 2018 now this is the review and monitoring the implementation of the guidelines shall be reviewed annually and the recommendations received shall be promptly acted upon thank you so much for your patient hearing both the offline and the online audience Uh, one one minute. Uh, the video I was the video clipping I was referred to. It is left though it is over time, but uh, it is very important for you. I'll cut short that video also. Start with. the vulnerable witness center we now proceed on to the room which is made for the witness this room has a screen which is connected through video conferencing the witness can see the proceedings which are going on in the court there are toys in the room for the comfort if there is a child witness this is a room for vulnerable witness otherwise but equipped with the equipments that are comfortable for the child and adjacent to it is the room of the accused which will be having a shield shield i mean to see a glass through which the, he can look into the proceedings which are going in the court room this is the room for the accused this is the room that is a reception area the witness along with his relatives or friends if any would be seated okay court room is fully equipped with a screen connected with the video conferencing this there is a room next to the court room where the accused would be seated as we can see there is a glass through which the accused can see the proceedings which are going on inside the court full video in some other uh, lecture and this is the how it works the wdc side thank you